Hello. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to make an image wrap around either to the other side of the screen or from the top to the bottom of the screen or the bottom to the top when it reaches the edge. We want to have that happen when the image is halfway over, it's going to pop back around to the other side. Now, the zero on the X is right here. So we actually want the origin point of the image to be in the negative x value because it's going to be a little bit to the left of zero. So we have to know what the width of the image is because we want it to be half of that width behind x of zero. Let's write a wraparound function. Now we're going to write a function that will work for any object. That way we can use it on any object on the screen. So we're going to start by making a function. We'll call it wrap around, and we're going to have a parameter. Now the parameter is going to accept a string with the name of the object. So I'm going to say object. Now we'll make the curly brackets that will control where the function begins and ends. First thing we need to do is get the current x position of the object. So we're going to say var object x equals get x position. and then the x position of the object. Now we are not putting it in quotation marks because the object variable is going to be holding a string and that string is going to specify which object we want to get the x position of. Next we're going to do the same thing with the y. So we're going to say var object y equals get y position and then same parameter because we also want to get the location of whatever string is in the object variable. Next, we want to get the object's width and height, because depending on the width and height, it's going to be how much past the x or how much past the y. So we'll say var object width equals get property. Now there's a number of properties we can get. The property we want to get is going to be the width. So we're going to say the ID. And the ID is going to be whatever strings in the object. And then we want the width property. Same thing with object height. Object height equals get property. We want to get a property from the object. And we want the height. So now that we've got all the information we need, we're going to have to go ahead and check the values of object X and Y and move the object around to the other side of the screen when it goes over the border. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if the object is halfway over the border on the left side of the screen. So we're going to say if object x is less than 0 minus object width divided by 2. So let's assume this object had a width of 50. Object width divided by 2 would be 25, so 0 minus 25 would be negative 25. So this is going to activate as soon as this little corner here hits negative 25, which means we're ready to move it over to the other side. So if that is true, we want to move it over to the other side. So we want to move it over right about here. So we are going to change the object x, object x to 320 because 320 is the edge of the screen, but we don't want it going all the way to 320 because we want it back a little bit because it's not going to be all the way on the screen. So 320 minus half of the width. So we'll say minus object width divided by 2. Now we're going to do the uh, same thing for the other side. We're going to check is it halfway over and then bring it back around this side. We're going to use an else if. So the else if will only get checked if this if is false. Because if we've just moved it over to this side, we're not ready to move it back over instantly. So we'll say else if object x is greater than 320 minus object width divided by 2. So it's minus because it's 320 minus half the object width. So if it's right about here. In that case, what we will do 
is we will move the object x back around to 0 minus object width divided by 2. Now, if neither of these are true, we're going to check if it's going off the top. So I'm going to move this up here. So we got to check the y would be 0 right at the top of the screen. We got to check if it's half the height over. So if the height is 100, we want to check if the y is negative 50, because that means it's time to bring it back down around the other side. Else if object y is less than 0 minus object height divided by 2. And if that is true, then we're going to move it down to the bottom. Now, the bottom is y of 450, so we want it half the height above y equals 450. So we're going to say object y equals 450 minus object height divided by 2. Finally, if this isn't true, this isn't true, this isn't true, we're going to have one other else if check to see if we are down at the bottom and ready to pop around back to the top. So we're going to say object y is greater than 450 minus object height divided by 2. And if that is the case, we are going to set object y back to 0 minus object height divided by 2. Okay, so we've changed the object x and or object y to the right place. And now what we have to do is we actually have to move the object. So we're going to use the set position command, set position. The object we want to set the position of is whatever string is in the object variable. So we'll say object. And we want to set it to an x value of object x and then a y value of object y. Now functions don't run automatically. So we need to make sure we call wrap around every time we hit a key down. So after we set the position of the knight in the key down function, we are going to call the wrap around function. And we've got to pass it a string. In this case, we want to move the knight. So we're going to pass the string image knight. Later on, we're going to use this same function to wrap around these objects to be collected and the orcs. So let's try it out to see if it works. We'll hit run. We'll move the knight left. He gets to the edge and he wraps back around and moves to the right. He wraps back around. We'll try it on the top and bottom too. Wraps back around. Let's move back to full screen so you can view the code in its entirety. Here is the wrap around function. We can get rid of that empty white space there. Also, if you'd rather see it in block mode, we'll show it in block mode. That's the top part and the bottom part. In a future lesson, we're going to learn how to make the enemies and the objects collected to move so our character can try to chase down the objects to be collected and avoid the enemies. To see the next lesson in the sequence, please click on the video link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. And to see the entire sequence, please click on the video link in the lower right-hand corner of the screen.